the draft of the gathering space criteria and criteria waiting for city council guidance. Who's up to bat? Okay. I'm a glutton for punishment. So let me very, I'm not, I don't want to keep you, um, but just to set the stage. Um, the normal way HUD CDBG DR funds or HUD CDBG funds are used for what are called public infrastructure projects is the funds are not used to acquire the property. Now, in this case, because of other circumstances, we're now at a point here, um, ourselves and you as the council, where that reality is not the case. We have to, in addition to building the gathering place, we also have to acquire the property. There isn't much precedent um, going back in HUD annals in terms of this type of engagement. So in a way, this is kind of, it's good and challenging. It's good in that we're blazing a new path. It's challenging in it is that we have to make sure we stay within the confines of the rules um, while we're blazing a new path. Um, now, we have gotten to this point, as previously shared with you, we down-selected based on a defined area to three sites. High-level criteria was used for that that basically came out of the um, action plan. It has to be at least, you know, somewhere between, well, it's, we promised two acres, so it's somewhere between 1.9 and 2.1. Um, it has to be able to have sufficient funding after acquisitions, demolitions if necessary, site improvements, relocation if necessary, to have more than sufficient funds out of the six million to be able to build what we said we were going to build. So it was those high level that got us to the point where we're looking at three um, sites. Um, and that comes to this point. Now, what HUD is going to expect us to do is to set a, use a set of criteria to review the three sites that have we have concluded are the most likely to meet a more specific set of criteria and to weight those criteria. And that's why I'm here tonight. I'm going to show it to you, and I certainly encourage and welcome your input. Um, what do I have to do? Press arrow. Over. Nope. There we go. Hey. <laughs> so, the criteria that has been drafted as a result of input from a technical review team um, that has included Alderman Strait and the city manager and the planning director and the city engineer, um, the Parks District and the Downtown Business Professional Association, the CDM Smith and myself. Um, what we're proposing is a criteria that has these factors, public input, costs, connectivity, accessibility, environmental consideration, historical consideration, economic impact, and visibility. There's a reason for this, before I get to the percentages, there's a reason these are all in here. These are the primary factors that HUD expects us to consider when selecting a site. It also reflects what we've envisioned and as a community in the action plan that was approved by HUD. Um, now clearly, the two most important factors in criteria, regardless of what we're doing, are public input and what's known as the necessary and reasonable assessment. The necessary and reasonable assessment are the costs. So it makes sense that the public input, since it is so important, it's always been a high priority for this city that that have the highest percentage than the others. Um, so that's been proposed at 30%. Again, costs, not total factors, but they do play a key role. Whatever site we ultimately select, we're gonna have to demonstrate to HUD that we did a reasonable vetting and we determined that it's for a variety of reasons that the cost for the site we pick is necessary and reasonable to accomplish this project. 
Um, and then all the other factors we've proposed as being equal because they all play an equal role. We have cited, for instance, in the action plan the importance of the economic impact. And by economic impact, what we're saying is where this is situated and how it is utilized and how it is structured can have a benefit in attracting more consumers, more attention, and potentially more investment into the downtown. Um, HUD is very, very, I'm sure you've heard this many times before, the two things they are very, very um, focused on is to take into account all the historical ramifications for any site we acquire, make sure that we're addressing them. Um, we have to weigh the timeline and the process that we involved, if necessary, in addressing historical considerations. Similarly with environmental, we're going to have to assess how these sites stand up against um, any environmental consistency considerations, for instance, if there are structures on the site, asbestos, lead paint, that type of thing, clear sites, you know, whether we're going to have to be concerned about brownfield remediation or not. Um, and as long as we demonstrate that we're taking all these into account as we deliberate, um, they're fine. The connectivity and accessibility and visibility ones, that goes back to what was stated and envisioned in the action plan. It, and that was input from the community as a whole. People wanted to have a sense that there'd be a new place in the downtown as a gathering place that would be readily accessible from throughout the downtown and through other parts of Minot um, and makes connections, logical connections, <coughs> historic connections to the other areas, in the, not only in the downtown but in the city. And then visibility we're creating a gathering place that has to have a strong sense of community, basically a combination of celebrating the city, but also being a place where people can come. It makes sense that whatever site ultimately is selected has the most visibility, not only within the downtown, but in terms of access. Um, so that's how we got to this point. And that's the underlying basis for the um, criteria. I think I might have gone through this whole month. I probably covered everything. That, um, I will share with you, we have, um, as we promised you, we have set two meetings. Um, you may have seen um, the flyer we're putting out that is going to be an ad in the Minot Daily News on Thursday. We've circulated it today to all the businesses in the downtown. You may have seen it's already posted here. We're going to continue to circulate it. It's up on the website. We're going to do two public hearings, public meetings one on December 5th, one on December 14th. We're going to lay out this, the logic behind it, how we got to this point. Um, the planning department is putting together renderings that will show just visualizing, not very generic, what each of the three sites would look like as a gathering place. Um, we're going to open it up for questions and give them answers. And we're going to ask them to vote. Tell us which of these sites you would like to see. That's the public input, and that'll be 30% ultimately. We're also going to try to maximize this, and again, this is something that HUD really encourages and likes. We're going to, for a two-week period, online on the city website, provide the same level of information and encourage people, if they want to, to vote online to give us more input. Um, and we envision that being closed either the 21st or the 22nd of December because we still want to keep to the timeline that we promised you we would make a recommendation to you from the Technical Advisory Committee to, for your January Council meeting. This I already explained to you. Um, connectivity I already explained to you. Same thing with the environmental, um, economic. Now, how this works, and again, how does it asking us to be very fair and accurate as we do scoring. So if, for instance, let's do it with the public input. If, for instance, at the end of all the voting, 60% of the vote was for one site, then that's going to be 18 points. And then whatever the percentage is on the other two, that divides the other 12 points. So it's a total of 30. There are, I believe, either, forgive me if I'm wrong, there are either seven or nine on the technical review committee. 
Um, we're not touching the public input. That's fixed. What we're going to ask each of the members of the technical review committee to um, do the same thing for each item, for each of the costs, for instance, for costs. We're going to ask them to determine which one is the least costly to the most costly, and within the 20 points, go across and score them. It's for a total of 20 points. And do the same thing all the way across for all of them. So theoretically, one side could get 100 points, the other two get none, or there could be a division, which is more likely to happen. Then what we're going to do is, and remember, the public input is constant throughout all the technical review votes. What we then do is take, let's say it's nine, we will then take the nine scorecards and we will average them out. We'll add them up and average them out. And whichever site has the highest point total based on the average, that's the one we will recommend to the city council at the January meeting. <clears throat> Open to questions. Questions for Mr. Zaki. John, are you looking for anything from us tonight? Um, if there's something, well, yes. <laughs> looking for a kind of approval of. Well, of yeah, can, uh, yes. Extent. Not or not or you know up or down or not. I, I don't. Do we need a vote? Or <coughs> want a vote? Okay. Yes. Either recommend or not recommend. That's okay. a good idea. President Japs are sure. I, there, there are a couple things on this that I, and I got this this afternoon. Right. Um, but I, I know it came in an email, but I didn't get a chance to look at, look at it until I got the hard copy here. But, and I'm going to be thinking about this quite a bit over the next few days. But I, um, right off the bat, there are a couple things that I'm not in love with in terms of the, the, the manner in which we're weighting certain aspects. If I look at something like the environmental consideration, which I, I completely appreciate that the federal government wants to take this into account um, and that's good that we are we're thinking about those things but ultimately that's just cost uh, you know it, it, at the bottom line on one of the projects it, it's either going to cost more because there are significant environmental considerations or there are fewer environmental considerations so that's one of the the issues where I uh, and so I, I see a 10% weight on that and then I look at something like connectivity and accessibility something that is going to be a, an attractive quality for this particular space for its lifetime, and, and to give the environmental considerations the same weight as something like accessibility and, and connectivity, which I think has a very profound impact on the citizens and the success of the space, I, I guess I would say I, I'm just not in love with, with those particular uh, percentages at this point, personal opinion. A um, couple other things, uh, historical consideration. Uh, you know, obviously, if there are significant historical components that need to be dealt with, that would certainly add cost, uh, no doubt about that. But I think that could also be looked at as an asset to a site where, where we have a significant, nice, historic site where it's going to add a lot of character to the, to the location. So as I, as I see the criteria, I wonder exactly how, we are, how are we going to be evaluating these particular things and, and what are they worth? Um, it, it, to kind of speak to that same point, we look at economic impact and, you know, obviously the, uh, the value that the gathering space brings to the other sites around it is something that should be measured, we should be taking a look at, but I think there's also opportunity cost at play uh, in terms of taking a site that may be ripe for another type of development and taking it out of the, uh, out of the realm or out of taking that possibility away uh, because, uh, you know, once again, uh, we put one thing in one, one area we, and, and then we take away the, the opportunity in another area. So I, I think that in terms of a, an economic impact, I think opportunity cost, from my perspective, should be a part of the conversation. Um, and then I would add a, a, another criteria here as well, or something that I think was appropriate to consider. Um, and I think that would be uniqueness. Um, we learned that the, the EIDC concept last week that sense of place uh, is becoming, you know, maybe more central to the way the, the generations coming up are thinking in terms of the way they, where they choose to be, where they choose to invest. And uh, uh, I would like to see this location, 
um, the, the potential maybe uh, for, for what it delivers as a space in our community considered. And so that's one of the criteria that, that jumped out at me here. Obviously, you've got my comments here. I, I'm not gonna offer a motion at this particular point. I'm gonna leave that to somebody else because I, um, in this current form, I guess I'm not comfortable without a little <coughs> more vetting, I guess. Uh, so I'll leave this for anybody else for discussion and thoughts, but thank you. Okay, Mr. Zakin, did you wanna sure, just add to, a comment at this sure, point? Sure, I think they're, President Chancellor Wolinwalski, I think they're all good points. Um, and I, I apologize, I should have, crafted this when I first presented this. One of the challenges for us is that um, we have to be careful in the criteria we use that and there's no perfect criteria to be objective, but we can't be, we can't allow criteria that's too subjective, that, that's more opinion driven than factually driven. There can be a balance. And that's kind of what went into this, just as an overall explanation. I would say that both on historic and environmental, it's not only cost that has to be factored, it's time. Um, and that can become, remember, we're, we're, up, we're up against the timeline. Um, we have to have this money spent, not encumbered, spent by um, September 30th, 2022. Um, we, you know, it may be that, you know, um, one, of the bill, uh, one of the properties we have to acquire, we can't, or we have to go through a whole additional ship, ship -o process. Um, so that has to be taken into account too. So it's more, I appreciate what you were saying, but it's more than just cost. Um, you, uh, in the context of opportunity, um, that could be factored in, in terms of, you know, a site being more ideal potentially for other forms of development. That could be factored into the economic impact. Um, because remember, economic impact is um, the context of what does this property do to jumpstart literally additional attention and investment involvement in the downtown. Certainly a factor is if, if, if there was a consensus that one of the sites would be far better as a office building than as a park, um, that has to be taken into account in the economic impact. Um, so I just wanted to give you some examples, but very good points. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Zakian. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm curious how uh, we're going to present the economic impact for the different sites that evening. I mean, we're not leaving it up to the citizens to infer on their own no. the economic impact would be for each location, correct? No, we're gonna give, no, um, Mayor Barney, President Jansen, no. Um, we're gonna give them very broad overlay, no, we're gonna give them broad overlay so they understand the higher level, which is what I presented to you as to how we got here and what these are going to be factored in and give them broad, like this discussion, but a broad overlay of how each of these criteria will be weighed, but we're not asking them to weigh in. No. One, one final comment, if I could. <clears throat> the uh, second meeting, I believe, uh, over uh, is, uh, I believe, scheduled for 14th of December. 14th of December, which is the exact same time that the Can uh, Canadian Pacific Christmas train stops in downtown Minot which is a really big retail event for all of the downtown merchants that evening. So that is going to have a significant impact on attendance with our downtown uh, merchants and residents. Um, I don't know if I, yeah, I just want to put it out there so everybody is aware of that. Well, That's a good idea. Is it, is it a concern location or that we might not draw as many? Well, I think if we have it at the auditorium, like I believe it's scheduled for now, you're not going to have very many people from the downtown area where this has the most impact because they're all going to be downtown working because there will be, I don't want to exaggerate, but thousands of people down sure. there uh, for the Christmas train. And, but if you were to have this in conjunction with the Christmas train, in a location downtown, that might be a really nice way to uh, connect. Connect. Maybe we could ask the staff to look at the both the timing of the meeting that we're talking about on the 14th and the timing of the train and so forth, and sort of try to work something out there. Uh, Alderman Strait. Sure. Uh, I completely agree with the mayor, I, and I think it's a fantastic opportunity to uh, 
showcase this particular project in the downtown and, and the, the options that exist, I think it's, it's a great way for us to put our best foot forward to get as much feedback. So I appreciate the mayor bringing that up. Um, I guess to, to address a couple of Alderman Walski's points, um, there was considerable back and forth yesterday in the room about this criteria and how best to go about it based on some of the background information and what HUD might look to uh, of us. And John had stated, this is a, we're kind of trendsetters here because this, there's no historical precedent for us to go by. So we're, we're trying to be as thoughtful and uh, weigh the, the, the aspects that are the most important, but also try to cover staff's uh, need to be checking the boxes, if you will, mm -hmm. um, that John kind of spoke to. And, and to the mayor's point, uh, I think we all, and this was brought up yesterday as well, that the economic impacts are uh, some of us that might have a desire to know more about business uh, will view them probably vastly different than other people. But um, that's the goal of this, is to be uh, the unique energizer of our downtown community. And I think that uh, we have to, those of us on the steering committee have to do a good job at this public meeting to try to convey to the general public that we have to kind of think big here. This is our one shot. And, and try to get that feedback. Um, those drawings that are going to be submitted are, are being laid out by planning as a result to uh, give folks an idea. It's a, it's a starting point. It's not the be all end all. We can't show three pictures of the Trinity site or the site south of Ebenezer's or the block across the street from the Parker as is and have people dream up. So we, it, it falls upon us and you all, hopefully that you'll be there, to say, hey, this is your opportunity to not just see this picture, take these factors in, and then think about the factors that you spoke about over the last week. Because I think everybody's in agreement on those. We just have to try to come up with some rubric behind the scene to, to weigh the criteria in the hopes that we're doing the best we can no, and, and yeah, if I may, or, or Chairman Jam, sorry, I completely appreciate the fact that we're 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 creating a prototype on this one. Frankly, um, I, I think my only concern is that you know, as I look through the criteria, I'm not 100% sure, you know, whether uh, sometimes we get a positive, sometimes we get a negative if we look at these things just in a in a slightly different way, and that could dramatically change the way. <laughs> The, this whole process works and ultimately a, a site selection. And so I think as we consider the historical considerations, you know, I think it's appropriate to weigh both, you know, maybe the historic nature of a site uh, at the same time as we, we weigh the, 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 the historic difficulties that may come with working at, at a particular site. Because I, I think that's, uh, you know, maybe it's the federal government that cares more about one versus the other, but I think they're, uh, I, I think they're both considerations ultimately in how we choose the best site. So, uh, and I think that really gets to the, to the point I have, I guess, with the uniqueness being, you know, I, I think I completely agree with Alderman Strait in the sense that we want this, we really want this thing to, to be the, the centerpiece, and uh, I want to make sure we get there. So, okay. so I, I guess ultimately we, we want to um, um, approve or um, accept this uh, proposal for these criteria and weighting uh, this methodology. So, um, if we, somebody would care to make a motion that we do that, and then if we if we uh, have some uh, additions, corrections, changes that we that we want to propose um, going forward um, at council, we can certainly look at that. So moved. Moved. Okay. Second. Second by Sipma. Discussion. President, President Jansen, I could just point out one thing. Um, I, Mayor, thank you for pointing out the potential conflict, and I apologize. I'm still learning the broad way of vetting, making sure we're. I mean, the good news is this is a. I'm learning quickly. This city has a lot of activities. The challenge is fitting them all in. Um, some of this information is already out, um, so we will do our best to. Um, make sure that everyone becomes aware. We will be able to shift this. We'll figure out a way to do this. It makes perfect sense. But I just want you to know that some of this is already out. Um, they're both being at the, at the auditorium, but we'll fix it so that everybody is aware that the second one will be somewhere in the downtown. 
Okay. Thank you. Uh, any, any further discussion? Oh, just mostly. on that point, John, uh, the Carnegie Center, I don't know what its availability is down there, but it, it seems like a, a natural location. That's a great idea. Sometimes that facility is used during the, uh, uh, but we, I'm sure the staff will find it. Yeah, and uh, there's a success depot. City manager, uh, chairman, Janser, I was just going to say maybe that we want to consider moving the the uh, date as well. Just I'm thinking of a lot of people downtown. That could be great to have them in the downtown, but I don't know how many people are going to want to come to a public meeting addition to all the other activities and festivities going on as well. So if we have your permission to evaluate maybe an alternative date too uh, and propose something that we think and feel will get the most people out to and involved in this discussion, um, well, I certainly appreciate it. Yeah, that's a good point. It, you know, the, the, the meeting may not be a good mix with people wanting to be down there with their family to see the train and kids and all of that stuff. So that's a good point. Okay, we'll leave it to the staff to, to work through that. Um, any further discussion? All the roll. Pajabula? Yes. Sitman? Yes. Street? Yes. Wolski? Uh, no. Barney? Yes. Janser? Yes. Olson? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, motion carried. Item 15 is the Build Minot Community Engagement Campaign Results. Thank you. I will try to be brief. Um, thank you for allowing me some time to talk about the Minot Public Library's Build Minot campaign. I'm Janet Anderson. I'm the library director. And with me today is Randy.